Hello. We'll get started in just a minute. Don. I always wait for you to come in before I do any getting any started. <laughs> oh, cooking. I made some homemade bread today and it was so delicious I think I ate about half the loaf. <laughs> but all right so we'll get started. Uh, we have several people in here it looks like. Um, if you're aware uh, yeah um, make sure you comment so that Dawn will keep track of who's been here and she'll draw uh, the winner at the end. So definitely Put a comment in the comment section um, but we'll get started if this is your first time here um, I'm gonna give my little spiel if this is not then you're gonna hear the same thing I say every time but I have a dual screen as you can see from looking at your uh, live stream uh, screen there um, so a lot of my work is done where you can see tonight's thermal web live will begin soon um, and the other part is at my sewing machine. The part at my sewing machine is my laptop where I can see all comments and questions. Um, so if you have any, Dawn will try to answer them. And if not, I will come back. Um, if there's, there's a couple times I'll come back to the sewing machine and I'll take a look at comments. And if I can answer them right away, I will. Otherwise at the end, I go and I look through them all. Um, and answer them and I tag your name so that if you have a question you'll get a, a notification that I answered it. Um, if you're first time here my name is Julia Schwery and I am an educational designer for Thermoweb on their fabric side. I also have a blog called Inflorescence Designs and you can uh, find all the Thermoweb projects I do there as well as other projects. I do blog hops, um, I do free quilt blocks there monthly, um, I'll tag that in there at the end. Uh, I forgot to put that in the description. Usually I put a link, but you can subscribe to my blog if you like and receive notifications if you want to see first what I'm doing. Um, so anyway, we're going to get started. If I reference any projects, I don't think I will tonight, but if I do, I'll link them or Don will link them for you. Um, so we're going to get started. So I'm going to go over to the other space and I'll see you over there. Okay. So you're here because we are making these fun, adorable little pumpkin and I've been calling them two different things. I've been calling them name cards or, I mean, these are for photos. Uh, my whole intention of these is that these are great if you're hosting a Thanksgiving or any dinner party this fall. These are great to put the name of the individual whose place setting you want. Um, and they're a great little take home gift that they can then decorate their homes with, with a photograph. Um, the size I made are small, so they're more like individual size. Uh, but you can always increase the size of the project and make them bigger and actually make them like one for like a centerpiece for like one table and everybody's name can be on the card. So tonight we'll be using, we'll be using fabric stiffener. Sorry about the glare. It's getting darker now. So I have a, a bright shiny light. <laughs> To give me some light fabric stiffener we're going to use fabric fuse as well as some glitter dust spray and 
Here is gold. I have silver. I thought I had it. Here it is. I, I knew I had it near me. So they have actually three different colors. They have gold, silver, and they have like an iridescent. Um, I'm using silver tonight because the picture frame, the picture holders are silver. But they do have gold if that's your preference. So we're going to begin. And I'm actually going to be making two at a time because to show you that these take no time at all. So the first thing we'll need to do is you'll need to cut your fabric and the measurements are five inches by 10 inches and that's for this small size. So I've already cut it down to the five inches. And what's really nice about this project is it's, it doesn't have to be accurate. It can be slightly off. Um, it's great for scraps. And then if there's anybody on here who doesn't have a sewing machine, this whole project, I am going to use a sewing machine, but this whole project can be done by hand stitching. So, or if you don't want to hand stitch, you could even use, because essentially it's just one seam that I'm using the, um, sewing machine for. Thermoweb does have a heat and bond uh, seam tape that you can use as well. And I'm just now thinking of that and I don't know why I didn't even actually just do that for tonight's project. <laughs> We're going to sew it. All right. So we start with our two. And this is the one of two times that I'm going to the sewing machine. So what I'm going to do is with this solid color, it doesn't really matter. Both sides are, let me cut that off. Both sides are the right side. There's no wrong or right side to my solid. So you're going to fold it in half and I'll be stitching along this line right here. And then if you have pattern fabric, you want to put it right sides together. and sew along here. I am going to do a quarter inch seam. So I will be right back. So both are sewn and pretty much from this point on it's mostly hand stitching. I do do a little decorative stitch on the leaf but so what you'll need to do is before we turn it right set out this is where we're going to do hand stitching. I'm going to do a running stitch so that's just like where you go in and out in and out around the bottom of each of my tubes. And for those who have been here before, my handy dandy upholstery thread. I love this stuff, honestly. <laughs> I, whenever I use regular quilting thread, I always break it. So I got a new one. The other one had been chewed up by the dog, but I kept using it. So what I'm gonna do for these two is I'm going to do a running stitch about a quarter of an inch down and my stitches are I'd say uh, about a half an inch apart and 
these actually these pumpkins are really popular and I've seen them uh, all over you know, social media and Pinterest and things like that. What we're doing tonight, we're adding one extra element and that's what makes it able to hold the photo holder as well as our stick securely. So once you get the running stitch around, just pull it tight and tie it off. for good measure. All right, so we'll do it to the other one. And I absolutely love these, like, purple. I don't even know what I would call this color. If it's like a It's not a cranberry, it's not red enough, but it's just so pretty. It reminds me of like a grape juice or something. We're going to pull this one tight and tie it off as well. And I'm just going to prep it again because we'll need it again for the top. Once you have your bottoms sewn, you turn them right side out, and then this is going to be the bottom. Let's see this side. And then next, we're going to add some fiber fill and the secret, secret weapon. going to put some fiber fill in and we're going to you want to really stuff it but keep an area in the center open you want a little bit around the entire perimeter If you think you have enough, you probably need a little bit more. That's always my rule with the stuffing of something. All right. So my secret, my secret is this. Styrofoam balls. These are two inch styrofoam balls. You can find them at the craft store online. And we're going to put that down in the center. of each of our pumpkins. And just making sure you have fiber fill all around it so that you get the nice ridges when you, when we do the, the yarn to create the ridges of the pumpkin. So we will be adding more fiber fill, but I won't do that quite yet. What we're gonna do next is we want the top to look really nice. So we're actually going to do like, we're gonna fold it over and do our running stitch around again. And I already got this ready. So we'll fold it over. And 
and then do our running stitch around. Sorry, my hands are in the way. Try to find the happy medium where my phone will focus. I, I try to watch my phone and I try to watch my hands as well at the same time. So once I've got it around, I am going to want to add just a little more stuffing before I tie it closed. And just as before, pull it tight. It's going to be kind of hard to see what I'm doing. I'm trying to pull it really tight, and that's where that upholstery thread is my best friend. Because I can pull it super tight, and it will not break on me. And I don't know. I, I was informed to use it. I was instructed to use upholstery thread when I was in school. And we had to do our own hand binding, like everything hand binding from putting on the binding on the back to folding over and then hand stitching it to the front. We had to hand do it all. And she told us to use upholstery thread. So that's where that came from. All right, I'm just going to bring it through there and cut it off. There's little ball number one. Let me refill my thread. And we're going to do it to pumpkin number two. Oh, I just went over. See how I did that? That's okay. We'll hide that. I don't know why I did that. It happens. This one has some stuffing still on top, but I'm gonna add just a little bit more. Sorry, I was bringing it up closer. When I, when I tie my stuff off, I usually bring it up really close to my chest so that I can have like an extra kind of holds it for me. Okay. So 
there we have our two pumpkin balls. Next, we are going to make our leaves. And the leaves, you can do simply one layer of fabric. You could use felt. Um, you could not put a leaf on there. You could leave that off. Uh, so, but what I did and what I'm going to do tonight is I'm actually, I like having that little decorative stitch. So I'm going to bring my fabric out and just draw a leaf shape and cut it out with my pinking shears. And that's so it doesn't fray. And then I'm going to be spraying it, get that heating up, spraying it with fabric stiffener. So it just kind of gives it a little more body. And since these are decorations and they're not going to get washed, it, it'll stay stiff forever. So. so I'm going to make it simple and I'm going to fold it in half so that my leaves are going to be cut out at the same time. Let me let that cool down for a second. This is a heat sensitive pen, so I didn't want to have a really hot thing. And I would take this off, but I've already glued that in there so it wouldn't come out. So we're just gonna eyeball it. You can make any leaf shape you want. Actually, I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch directly on the line and then I'm going to cut out around it. And I just erased that one because I noticed I put it too close so I wouldn't be able to cut out with my pinking shears if it was too close. So I'm going to move it over. So this is the last step I'll be doing over at my sewing machine. So I'm going to take a peek and see if there is any comments that I need to answer. And then I'll be back over here. I see a comment about clever how I did that with the end of the thread. I'm not sure what I did was clever, but I'm excited that it was clever. <laughs> if you could enlighten me, that'd be great. The don that yeah the donut pin cushion that's that's my my fun thing I actually have a tutorial on my blog that shows you how to make those you just go to my blog and type in donut and it should pop up as one of one of several posts because I like to make things with food Um, about the, let me, let me go over to the other thing and, because I think you probably can hear me better if I'm over here. For the weight, 
Well, we're going to pretend this is a photo. Or here. This is a little bit heavier. It's a Pokemon card. <laughs> um, honestly, it holds it. Like, there's no extra weight. I mean, if you want, you probably could add some, like, some, if you were to put, like, a piece of fabric down before you did stuffing, and then you could add some rice, kind of the same way you would do in, like, adding rice or walnuts to make a pin cushion. You want to put that piece of fabric on the bottom because, you know, there is that hole, and if the fabric's there, that's going to prevent anything from slipping through. But as you can see, this photo holder is holding it's it's pretty thick and it's a decently this is definitely heavier than a photo this whole card contraption so i think it would actually just it would hold it just fine let's try it on the purple one yeah but if that's a concern you like i said you can just put a piece of fabric probably just like a two inch square fabric down before you put the fiber fill in and the styrofoam ball, well, and before the styrofoam ball, put a little bit of rice and that would definitely give it some more weight. Um, the balls will hold themselves once we add this. You can see how it kind of makes it a little flatter. Right now, yeah, they don't hold themselves up because we haven't added the, th the yarn. So we're to the leaves. I'm gonna iron it to get the ink to disappear and then I'm going to cut them out So what we'll do next is we're going to add that fabric stiffener. I normally have a different sheet that I put down, but I'm going to use this piece of kind of scrap fabric to lay down and spray. Okay. So I'm using the fabric stiffener. You can spray, um, and then let it air dry, or you can also iron it for a little bit quicker. So we're gonna move it in just a little bit. I don't want there to be an overspray onto my mat. I'm gonna do both sides. You don't wanna like saturate them. I'm just gonna, you can use pressing cloth, you can use parchment paper or um, pressing paper. I just do that until it's dry. And then, I mean, since it's not wet anymore, I'm okay to put my iron. I just don't want any like residue on my iron with, if there was like wet enough to put residue. So, all right, so those are complete and they're they definitely have a little more body to them now. All right. We'll just let those sit there and now we're going to shape our pumpkin. So for this, you'll need a yarn needle and some yarn and I chose this. It was pretty with silver specks. And now I gotta find the end of it. <laughs> 
There it is. <laughs> and I usually make this decently long. And I did a total of five. One, two, three, four, five times around. The trickiest part with this is the first time through because we do go up through the styrofoam ball. And if you work with a bigger pumpkin, that might be the only concern is trying to get through the styrofoam if you made a bigger size. Um, but the needle for here is almost the same size, so it works great. So we're gonna go, we're gonna start through the bottom, find that hole, and then as center as you can, you can kind of hear it, I'm pressing up through, and see it comes straight up through, through that styrofoam. And now that we've made one, we've gone up through it one time, it'll easily find that hole each time and go up through it. You wanna pull through, but you wanna leave a tail because we're gonna use that to tie it off. And you might end up pulling some stuffing out, but that's okay. So we're just gonna go around, I believe four times, because then the fifth time we'll be tying it off. So we just go right back where we were. And I just, it slides right up through that hole that I already made. And decide where you want. And pull it nice and tight. Come back around to the bottom. And decide where you want the second one. And you can, you don't have to pull it super tight at the beginning. It, it, it makes it easier so you don't have to try to keep pulling each of the individual ones tight. It's a very forgiving craft. So we got one, two, three. We'll go through number four. This will be our last time coming up through the bottom. Deciding where we want it. Making sure that our fifth one is even with the other four. And then this last one, we'll come down here and we're gonna tie it off. See how that flattens that out down there, so that's why they sit so nice. And I'm going to tie one more time. And if you wanted to try to tuck that up in there, you could, but for me, it's the bottom. It's just going to go right there. I'm gonna... And so like I said, it's a little forgiving. You can kind of move. And the reason that's why you want all that stuffing in there around the ball, so that. It actually creates those ridges of a pumpkin. Because if you don't have enough stuffing, it's it, it's very flat. So there's pumpkin number one. So we're going to do the same thing with the purple. And I don't think that's going to be enough. So I'm going to grab another piece on the safe side.
number four, so then number five will be right here and we'll tie it off. Oh, it got all twisted. came out. So there's pumpkin number two. Okay, we're getting there. So next was pretty much assembly. Um, Just realized I didn't get out my floral pins. I have them right here. I have a ton of these. Has anybody ever made those um, ornaments with floral pins and sequins? I have. <laughs> I have a whole box full of stuff for them, but we're going to repurpose our floral pins for tonight. So what we need to do next is we're, like I said, we're going to do some assembly. So we need our leaves, a floral pin, for each leaf. Our photo pins. And I just got these off Amazon. They came in a pack of 24. And if you don't know what to call them, if you I'll go on the blog post, I have a link to it. And then I went outside to my yard. We uh, did some leaf raking to, uh, yesterday, and I had my five-year-old help me gather some sticks, so we'll have to pick pick two of them, and they might be a little long, so we'll break them. <laughs> so I like to add a little bit of glue. So we're going to use a little bit of fabric fuse. There's some fiber and things in there, and that'll help stick these items. So the first thing I want to put in is my stick because it is the thickest and I like this one. It's a little long though. And I honestly love, love this one. I love the organic curves and everything of it. So we're going to do those two. And I'm just going to add just some glue to the bottom. And any glue, like it's not really meant to stick to the styrofoam, but what this will do is stick to any of the fiber fill and it'll give us just that little bit of extra added support. So then you just, oh, I just broke it. <laughs> That's okay. Just stick it down in there. This one's gonna have a little, a little short one. And then this one. So we're going to do the same thing with our photo pins. I'm going to put just a little bit of glue for the extra reinforcement. And this glue does not dry like super fast, so it will take time for it to set up. But in the case of this project, it's really not an issue, but uh, this Fabric Fuse works great with fabric products. Um, you do have to let it sit though and dry, but I had it stick sequin, um, sequin ribbon to felt and it stuck and it stuck really well. So, all right, so there we have that one. 
put it down so you can see it. And I don't know if you noticed on that one, I, I stuck it in and it felt really loose. Like I put it in the same hole as the stick. So I just pulled it up, moved it around. Like that one feels a little, little loose. So it's all about the feel. That one feels a lot better. And the last thing is we're going to do the same thing with our leaves. First thing I'm going to do is I am going to put it through here. The nice thing about this is you just put it right in the nozzle, get some glue on there, and pin this wherever you see fit, just making sure it goes into the styrofoam. There's one. And there they are. Now you could stop here if you just like this look or if you like all things sparkly and glittery, then uh, follow me on to the next step, the last step. We're gonna add some glitter dust. So I'm going to move some stuff around. a box. <laughs> Want to give your glitter a good shake before use. Now I will say when this does spray, it does look like it's kind of got I don't know, almost like a dusty kind of look to it. But once it dries, that it goes away. Yeah, we're just gonna And by the dusty look, it almost reminds me of like the um what do you call it? The fiber fill. I'm not sure you can kind of see that, but that that goes away once it dries. I want some under the leaf. Okay. And there it is. Now until that dries, you might not be able to see the glitter on the ones we just did, but can definitely see it on the ones I did previously. And they're so pretty. But I'm gonna leave these to dry in here. And if I wanna add more glitter, I will. There they are. Now I have two more added to my table decorations for Thanksgiving this year. I'm gonna go back over to my screen and actually move this. I want to bring my iron back over here <laughs> and see if there's any questions and Don will take care of the drawing. We'll get over there for that. And that's not like the only glitter. Thermoweb has other glitter products that you can use on your fabric projects. It's just they can't be ones that can be washed. So if it's for a decoration or something that you're hanging on a wall, if you don't plan on washing it, you can add also their other glitter products. And I love glitter, so. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm one of those moms, I have no objections to my kids using glitter. I don't care, I love it. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, you can wash Glitz Glitter Gel. I did not know that. Ah, I'm going to have to try that. I have some. I just haven't played with it yet. How much fabric for each one? Um, each of those little pumpkins is 5 by 10 inches. So not very much. And then the leaf is essentially scraps. And all the supplies, you can find all the supplies. I have the link in the description to the blog post. So you can go there and you don't have to rewatch this. Like if you remember what to do, you don't have to rewatch this to get the supplies. You can find all the supplies there. Congratulations, Denise and Sue. We had two winners. Hooray. <laughs> I'll keep this, the live going for um, three or more minutes. Does that sound good, Dawn? Or, and then I'll shut it off at about... 20 after. See if there's any other questions or. Or if anybody has suggestions or, or comments on what they want to see for next month. Next month, I have a project in mind. It's going to be ornament. An ornament but it's not yet fleshed out so there are definitely there's definitely room for what you want to see And I'm just seeing the comment about Girl Scouts. Love it. Yes. You might be able to see my shirt. It is my Girl Scout shirt. I just came from my meeting for my fourth and fifth graders. They definitely could do this. I actually did host a uh, program last year for sewing, and I taught girls basic sewing stitches, and I taught, showed them all different types of quilting. And it was, it's a program called Juliet Sews. And it was really successful. I'll be doing something similar for it next year too. This year I'm doing a craft encoding. Teaching the girls how crafts are different from art. And how they are essentially coding. Or like algorithms and things like that. In disguise. So. I'm excited for that. Yeah, I'm really excited for it. They're going to be doing um, algorithms with patchwork quilt, writing like basic algorithm of with a quilt design. They're going to do what's called loops with making jewelry. They're going to learn color theory and do other some fun other fun things with. It's called events and conditionals. <laughs> Oh. 
Thanks, Don. I love it. And like I said, next year it'll be geared towards quilting again because quilting, the science behind it is it's all about geometry. So we're going to gear it towards that. At least not all quilting, but a lot of quilting is geometry based. Well, I'm going to close it up here in just a minute or so. And I want to thank, if you're still on, thank you for joining. Hope to see you next time. I had fun. All right. Well, good night, everybody. Have a great rest of your night and see you in November.